The journalist who first exposed the Twitter files that showed high levels of political interference in the days before Elon Musk took over the platform gave evidence earlier this year at a congressional hearing in the United States. Matt Taibbi has been a reporter for 30 years, most of the time at Rolling Stone magazine. And he describes himself as someone who grew up a traditional ACLU liberal. That's a centre leftist for our Aussie viewers. And he says he has always been a staunch defender of the First Amendment of the US Constitution, which enshrines the right to free speech. I'm not a so-called journalist. Uh, I've won the National Magazine Award, the IF Stone Award for Independent Journalism, and I've written 10 books, including four New York Times, New York Times bestsellers. <laughs> Uh, I'm now the editor of the online magazine Racket on the independent platform Substack. I'm here today because of a series of events that began late last year when I received a note from a source online. It read, are you interested in doing a deep dive into what censorship and manipulation was going on at Twitter? A week later, the first of what became known as the Twitter files reports came out. To say these attracted intense public in interest would be an understatement. My computer looked like a Vegas slot machine uh, as the, just the first tweet about the blockage of the Hunter Biden laptop story registered 143 million impressions and 30 million engagements. Taibbi went on to tell the hearing that the original promise of the internet was that it might democratize the exchange of information and ideas globally. That the very existence of the internet was a positive threat to challenge the control of anti-democratic governments everywhere. But sadly, the Twitter files revealed an attack on the free flow of information across our world. What we found in the files was a sweeping effort to reverse that promise and use machine learning and other tools to turn the internet into an in instrument of censorship and social control. Unfortunately, our own government appears to be playing a lead role. We saw the first hints in communications between Twitter executives before the 2020 election when we read things like flagged by DHS or please see attached report from FBI for potential misinformation. This would be attached to an Excel spreadsheet with a long list of names whose accounts were often suspended shortly after. Taibbi says the list of names were of political activists on both the right and the left too. The people affected include Trump supporters, but also left-leaning sites like Consortium and Truthout, the leftist South American channel Telesur, the Yellow Vest movement. That, in fact, is a key point of the Twitter files, that it's neither a left nor right issue. So, what was the most important and significant finding of the Twitter files? Taibbi says he and his fellow journalists learned that Twitter, Facebook, Google and other companies had developed a formal system for taking in moderation requests from all sorts of government agencies like the FBI, the Department of Defense and even the CIA. And there were hundreds more quasi-government agencies and NGOs, that's non-government organizations, like Stanford University, the Global Misinformation Index Group and many others who were also doing the same thing with these so-called moderation requests. A focus of this fast-growing network, as Mike noted, is making lists of people whose opinions, beliefs, associations, or sympathies are deemed misinformation, disinformation, or malinformation. That last term is just a euphemism for true but inconvenient. Undeniably, the making of such lists is a form of digital McCarthyism. Ordinary Americans are not just being reported to Twitter for deamplification or deplatforming, but the firms like PayPal, digital advertisers like Xander, and crowdfunding sites like GoFundMe. These companies can and do refuse service to law-abiding people and, and businesses whose only crime is falling afoul of a distant, faceless, unaccountable, algorithmic judge. As someone who grew up a traditional ACLU liberal, this mechanism for punishment and deprivation without due process is horrifying. Taibbi summed up by saying that it's not possible to instantly arrive at truth, but it is becoming technologically possible to instantly define and enforce a political consensus online, which is a great threat to people of all political persuasions.
If you enjoyed that content, there's lots more where that came from. The Other Side Australia is back every Tuesday and Friday on ADH TV and all good podcast platforms. It's your weekly short circuit summary of the best news commentary from Australia and abroad. Don't miss it.